Hyena was uh, about me fucking my way out of, like, fucking my way over a breakup and, like, kind of shows a bit of how I learned how to deal with women. And it's funny, you know, like, people like it. It's funny, it's wild. Uh, and it's dark as fuck. Hummingbird is actually a bit darker. Um, I probably, I wouldn't have been able to write Hummingbird until I wrote Hyena. You know, it was like I had to, I had to, this one's less braggy. This one is, you know, I, I talk about stuff I'm fucking embarrassed about more. Uh, I, I, it talks more about my family and there's less sex stories in it. So, and, and it, it talks to, it talks about, look man, I'm like a functioning addict. If that's what you want to call it, you know, uh, that's the easiest way to sum it up. I'm a functioning addict and it talks about like a bender that I went on um, and my battle I fucking hate that shit, that cliche, my battle with depression. Oh, fuck, yo, whatever. I live with fucking depression. You deal with it, you know? As do a lot of people. Like, it's not... Too many people got it to be like, it's just battle. It's just, I'm just dealing with fucking depression, and I write about it. It's still a battle, though. I mean, I, is this something that you're trying to change, or are you cool with just being a functioning addict? I don't know, man. Like, right now... Cool with functioning addict, I guess. Like, I, look, man, I quit ketamine to sell this fucking book. So, and then at the end of the, like, my little fucking dessert, I'm like, once I get done selling this shit, I'm gonna fucking, y'all ain't gonna see me for a week. I'll fall off the deep end, like that. Uh, that's kind of my deal. It's hard to take ownership. It's hard to fucking claim where you're wrong. It's easy to be like, this, 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 and you need to do this, and this is happening to me because of this. To when you are the victim of a situation, uh, you don't have to take as much responsibility. You know what I mean? Like, that is the freedom of being the victim, but on the other side, when you don't take the responsibility, you are powerless and you are a leaf floating down a river and it will take you where it goes. So it was, and I think that is part of growing up. It's like trying to figure out how to be a man, a woman, or whatever the fuck you are, you know what I mean? Like uh, just trying to figure out growing up and taking ownership of things. And, and certain stuff like, yo, my man ODing on that shit, it's gray, you know what I mean? Like, it's there's so much gray area in it. Like, the story is, uh, he wants some drugs, I give him some, he doesn't listen, he does too much, and now he's fucked up. So partially, in my brain, it's like, yo, dude, you're the fucking grown-up. It's like if I hand you a gun and you shoot yourself in the fucking foot. Yeah, I handed you the gun, but you pulled the fucking trigger. So like, okay, I'll take some ownership, but it's not all me, you know? So, and that's kind of, that's kind of where I was at with that one. And it was this very selfish, I was in this very selfish place where I was like, I resented him for fucking ODing at his party. I'm like, what are you fucking doing, dude? Like, you don't know how to handle your shit? No, but you seem really concerned about what the other guests thought. Yeah. It didn't, it, that didn't necessarily seem like that was something, that's not something I would expect. Like, I also think that, hey, personal responsibility also comes with, you know, not giving a fuck what other people think. Nobody wants to be the asshole that ruins the birthday party. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to be the fucking dickhead that ruins the birthday party. You can be right and you can still be an asshole, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, didn't, want, I didn't want that, dude. Like. Who the fuck wants that, man? You're like, shit, dude, like, fuck. <laughs> birthday, boy is, birthday boy is unconscious and a flop sweat, fucking convulsing. Uh, yeah, man, it's, yeah. Well, who gave it to him? He gave it to him. And it's like, you feel it. You feel that energy.
and I reacted to it. And I wasn't, I guess I don't give a fuck enough. You know what I mean? I gave a bit of a fuck. Cause I was like, shit, dude, try to tell, you know, and that's the other thing. It's like that fucking, you want to act like you care. You want to show some signs of caring, but at the same time, you're like, fuck is he doing? I told him. So it's this, it's, uh, it's, it's being self-aware and it's being, and it's having like this emotional IQ of being like, how is this going to read in the party? If I don't take any fucking responsibility, I'm going to look like a total fucking dick. So sometimes you got to be like, yeah, my bad, man. Psh, I told him, but you know, or, or. to be fair to me, I was like, I was a child fighting a man at that. in in the second story, like I hadn't gone through puberty yet. He had, uh, I was in his neighborhood. I was out of my neighborhood. There was all these other, there was all these things that came into play uh, that made me not want to fight back. Uh, perhaps, you know, perhaps I had lost self-confidence over that 10 year period or, or six year period or whatever the thing was. I don't, you know, I, I don't know why I didn't fight back in that situation and fought back in the other situation. I took the ass whooping both ways, you know what I mean? And in that first in that first story was that first story about being young and you know just like kids fight, dude. Like that's what happens, you fight. And it was you should at least, like that's what happens when you're a child. You're supposed to you're supposed to you're supposed to scrap, you're supposed to fucking get scratches and cuts and hurt yourself and bump your fucking head. And if you're not doing that, and if your kid doesn't have scratches, then what the fuck are you doing with your goddamn child? Like you're supposed to, this is, this is, this is, you, you're supposed to go out and play with kids and problem solve. You know what I mean? Like this is problem solving. You got to figure out how to operate in this world. And you do that at, at a very early, at an early age by participating in these weird little groups with other children. And like, my mom was a hippie and she sent me out in this working class neighborhood, lower working, like low class working class, working poor neighborhood, welfare neighborhood that, that you know, that was, that was scrappy. And uh, with this very hippie, you know, I feel when you fucking peace, uh, with these hippie idealistics that didn't serve me. It was like that, no one else was playing by those rules. You know what I mean? Like there's no reasoning in a fucking, there's no reasoning. If you're getting punched in the face, like reasoning goes out the window. Trying to talk to somebody goes out the window. Your main concern is to get that motherfucker off of you. You can talk about it afterwards. And a lot of times getting that motherfucker off you is through force. Sometimes you have to match force with force. You can't be like, I don't think we should do this. I feel bad when you hit me in my face. You know, like, no, dude, get that motherfucker off you. And it was like, and that's, and that's partially what that story was about. It was about like these hippie idealistics, which have kind of came into the mainstream now you hear it all the time don't bully don't bully yeah don't bully but fucking learn karate too like so we can you know he shouldn't bully and you don't be a bitch and then we meet somewhere halfway uh and that was kind of that story was addressing those times the times that we live in now to be real with you like yeah, I'm not for bullying. I'm I'm not for that shit. Like I think it's fucked up. I've been a bully. I've bullied. I think most people can relate to that. Uh, that being said, like yo, man, like you have to you have to be self reliant in this world. That used to be being a man or being a woman is being self reliant, like being able to take care of your own shit. And I feel like we're getting away from that. All we do is tell, tell, tell. I mean, even on Instagram, I got grown-ups flagging me for pictures they don't like. Like, that's some bitch shit, dude. Like, when do we turn into these fucking tattletales, dude? Like, when do we turn into these fucking little, all we do is snitch on each other. I don't, I don't respect that. I just kind of wanted to write a story that is not that different from a lot of people's, but right now in this period of time is under told. 
Back in the 70s and the 60s, you had more of this type of writing. You just did. If you go back and look at it, you just did. You had like fucking these beat writers and you had like, uh, you know, Eldridge Cleaver and fucking Dick Gregory type shit. Like you had motherfuckers that were writing about their experience. And go to the bookstore now, it's just like some rich chick trying to find herself. You know what I mean? Like, I don't you can see yourself a celebrity? No. What up? Um, there, Netflix is over there. I can't get a meeting at Netflix. I'm looking right at the Netflix thing right there. They, I can't get a meeting with them. You had a, you had a meeting with, you had a deal with HBO? I did. With yeah, I did, I did. I did. Um, didn't go. Let me get on first, you know what I mean? Like, let me get, I'm, I'm in a one bedroom apartment. I can't afford to buy a house in the city I live in. I, I, I'm doing better than I ever thought I'd do. And I'm, you don't even know how grateful it is. Sometimes like, honestly bro, sometimes I, I, I'm tearing up thinking, of, sometimes I just wanna cry. Cause it's like, man, dude. Like if you would have told little 12 year old fucking, if you would have told 12 year old me I'd be over here talking to you on a fucking, uh, on a roof about a book I wrote, I wouldn't believe that in forever. I wouldn't believe that in forever, but I'm not where I want to be yet. I'm grateful where I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be here, but I'm not done. And I'm not a celebrity. The funny, celebrities know me. Celebrities know me, but decision makers don't fuck with me. And that is this, that, that's been that for me. And it's kind of frustrating. Why do you think that is? I don't know, man. They don't know what to do with me. They don't, they don't know where to put me. The book sold out. Like I was telling you about that. The book sold out in four days. They wouldn't rebuy the book. They don't know what to fucking do with me. You know, back in the day, I was in, like, I don't like this term, but this is what I was called. I was just some fucking wigger to them. It's like some wigger off of trash TV on Jenny Jones. And I was some wigger fucking shock jock. And like, yo, that's, that, that's yeah. shit. In the comments they say that shit, you know what I mean? Like, suck my dick. Like, that, yo, that's what, they don't know what to do with that shit. But like, the people that fuck with me, fuck with me. Uh, and it's frustrating. It's it's frustrating to be dismissed and to have your ideas fucking ignored. Not challenged, but ignored. Like th that's frustrating. But yo, man, like, hey, if 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 that's the hardest thing in my life, I'm grateful. You know what I mean? Like, if that's the hardest thing I got to go through in my life. Talking about, I'm wearing a fucking fancy watch and fucking Cartier glasses and a gold ring talking about the uh, mainstream won't pay attention to me. Like whatever dude, I'll keep fucking grinding, I'll get it. I'll get there. I got, I got my fan base, I'll keep going. 